After completing a population monitoring exercise, our partners were shocked at the amount of planning and resources it required. It helped them to see why having a coordinated plan for radiation emergencies was so important. Hello, my name is Chris Moore. Together with my colleague, Ray Walker, we bring over 50 years of radiation emergency experience to the Texas Department of State Health Services. 10 years ago, when emergency responders thought about a radiological event, we all assumed the response would be handled by the fire department and hazmat teams at the scene. That changed after the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, held a meeting about public health's role in setting up community reception centers after a radiation emergency. I saw that we would be responsible for population monitoring and radiation effects tracking for the public and the environment. The magnitude of that task made us realize we had a gap in our preparedness plans. To bridge that gap, we began to expand our radiation response program and make our colleagues aware of their role in a radiation emergency. Since then, we've educated city, county, and state response leaders about the importance of radiation emergency preparedness. We help them think through the training, equipment, and volunteers their communities would need to complete response activities. In Texas, our first step was to hold tabletop exercises in cities across the state, in some cases bringing over 200 people together. By simulating the logistical and communication challenges of a population monitoring scenario, we demonstrated to our local partners that radiation emergency planning is critical. That fueled demand for additional preparedness actions in their own communities. We then assisted Harris County, El Paso, and Waco in hosting community reception center exercises. That helped bring together local and regional response partners and gave them an example of how they could manage a radiation emergency. One of our constant challenges is the size of Texas. Coordinating resources across such a large state is complicated, especially because our public health system is split up into a number of regions. In terms of radiation preparedness, our goal is to help each region identify their capabilities both for themselves and for the regions surrounding them. It's important that they know what they have, what they need, and what they can supply to others in an emergency. Knowing that allows us to work together to plan how resources and volunteers can be tracked and shared to support radiation emergency response across the state. Currently, we're making sure all regions and major cities in Texas have a chance to develop and exercise their radiation emergency plans. Response activities depend heavily on having the right people in the right places. One way we hope to build that capacity is by improving how we train and identify Medical Reserve Corps volunteers. Because we have MRCs with radiation volunteers, one goal is to make sure they receive the training and guidance needed. And CDC material has helped tremendously with that. In addition to our State Radiation Incident Annex, we want to publish more radiation plans and procedures for our State Medical Operations Center and Regional Medical Operations Centers, similar to what we've already developed for floods, fires, and hurricanes. Having those plans in place will help us formalize the role of public health in a radiation emergency and maintain these partnerships over time. The CDC has been a part of this journey from the beginning. We have good relationships with Dr. Armin Ansari and other subject matter experts at CDC who have attended some of our trainings and provided guidance when needed. We are continually promoting radiation training and exercise with our local partners, and some of the best resources we've provided are taken from the CDC website. Their exercise materials for community reception centers, population monitoring guide, and sheltering guide were some of the first clearly written radiation preparedness resources that we could use and share. Hosting a community reception center can be stressful, so it's helpful to be able to tell our partners where they can print out resources such as scenarios, contamination cards, and guidance, and adapt them to meet their needs. We can't just sit back and expect radiation preparedness to take care of itself. It requires a strong, prepared team. Often, that means finding partners who are passionate about radiation safety and are willing to put time in beyond what their full-time job requires. They become our local champions, and they help us as trainers, spokespersons, and leaders who make radiation preparedness possible in their communities. I'm proud to see how much progress we've made. When our partners finish a tabletop exercise, they see how important this work is. For us, it's a constant reminder that what we do makes an impact and it all adds up to make Texas even more prepared for a radiation emergency. Mm -hmm.